Now, what we will do is uh, discuss a few applications of the integral energy balance equation what we have derived. First example is finding out the heating load of a heater. Second is the calculation of power required for compression. These two examples are exactly same as you would have done in a process calculation course. Idea is to show that what we discussed is a more general form compared to what we have used or in fact what we have solved is the integral energy balance equation just to make that connection so that you know that uh, conceptually they are same. Third example is of course, uh, a transient energy balance uh, filling of a tank will be considered. The first two examples are exactly what you would do in a process calculation course. Okay. Okay, Let us read the example assuming idle gas behavior calculate the heat that must be transferred when a stream of uh, nitrogen uh, flowing at a rate of 200 mole per minute is heated from 20 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade. This example is from the book uh, Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes by Felder and Russo, an excellent book for uh, process calculation. We are given the specific heat capacity, also like to mention the uh, unit, it is uh, in terms of kilo joule per mole degree centigrade. Okay. The units can differ based on the uh, book available with us. Okay. So, of course, it is steady state. So, let us write the steady state uh, integral energy balance equation. Okay. And uh, we have written the rate of heat transfer term and rate of shaft work term on the left hand side because usually as I told you that is the usual unknown. Okay. Assumptions, there is no shaft work, it is just getting heated, there is only one inlet, one outlet and uh, as we have discussed, the, there is going to be the temperature change is about 80 degree centigrade and uh, we can easily neglect changes in kinetic and potential energy. Okay. So, how does it get simplified? How does the integral balance get simplified? This term is 0 and uh, have only one outlet. So, m dot out into h cap out and have only one inlet. So, m dot in h cap in and because you have only one inlet, one outlet the mass flow rate should be same. So, we will just represent that as m dot into h cap out minus h cap in. Now, in terms of the question, the flow rate is given in terms of mole per minute and uh, of course, C p is also in terms of kilo joule per mole degree centigrade. So, let us uh, rewrite this equation in terms of molar units. So, n dot now represents the molar flow rate and h out minus h in now represents change in enthalpy in terms of let us say uh, joule per mole. Okay. So, in molar units q dot uh, net in is equal to n dot h out minus h in. Now, we will have to evaluate the change in enthalpy, we will assume as the question says uh, idle gas behavior in which case the enthalpy change depends on temperature change only. So, d h is equal to C p d t and let us integrate. So, h out minus h in will be z equal to integrate the right hand side from t in to t out. C p is not a constant as a function of temperature as given by the equation and remember you should substitute in terms of degree centigrade only as per the equation given and this is the equation given to us. Simple integration will give us 2.332 kilo joule per mole. Okay. So, let us substitute in this equation q dot net n is equal to n dot into difference in enthalpy, n dot was given as 200 
and substitute for delta h or h out minus h in and nessa units we get uh, about 8 kilowatts okay. that is a heat to be supplied. Okay. A typical process calculation example to emphasize that that equation is nothing but a integral energy balance equation. We have we have derived a very very general form, but when you simplify we get the equation which are used. Okay, Let us look at uh, another example. Uh, this example is from Fox and Macdonald okay. and let us read the example air at uh, 101 kilo Pascal and 288 Kelvin enters a compressor at 75 meters per second and leaves at an absolute pressure and uh, temperature of 200 kilo Pascal and 345 Kelvin respectively and speed of 125 meters per second. Look at the velocities now as I told you for compressors and the velocities are much higher. So, inlet velocity is 75, exit is 125 and of course, there is a pressure change and temperature change as well. Okay. The flow rate is 1 kg per second and uh, because of compression there is a lot of heat release, we will have to remove that. So, the cooling water circulating around the compressor casing removes 28 kilo joule per kg of air, determine the power required by the compressor. Okay. So, this also a typical uh, <coughs> example which comes in a process calculation course. Once again of course, steady state operation, let us write down the steady state integral energy balance equation. And let us simplify what are the assumptions one inlet and one outlet like in the last case and we neglect changes in potential energy not in kinetic energy. We cannot in neglect the velocities are uh, high difference is also high. We have seen that for uh, uh, 100 meters per second order of inlet velocity even at 10 meters per second change in velocity can cause. Uh, significant change in kinetic energy. If not very, very high it can cause. Okay. Okay, so, and uh, we do have a shaft work. So, left hand side we have both uh, energy addition by heat transfer and work transfer. Right hand side we have one outlet is m dot out and we have h cap out plus v squared out by 2 and the for the inlet we have uh, m dot in h cap in plus v in squared by 2 ok. Of course, a negative sign here ok. And uh, because it is only one inlet one outlet m dot is uh, same. So, let us take out that and write as h cap out minus in similarly v squared by 2 out minus in okay. Okay. now we'll have to evaluate uh, the different terms and we'll write that equation for the rate of shaft work that's what is to be found out so these terms on the right hand side and then minus q dot net in now, we will assume air to behave as ideal gas and in this case we are let us assume the specific heat capacity is a constant value and we have used Cp cap because the unit is joule per kg Kelvin. Earlier we use Cp because it was joule per uh, mole per Kelvin in terms of molar units it is in terms of mass units. M dot has been given as 1 kg of air per second, T out is 345 Kelvin, T n is 288 Kelvin. So, the 
the difference in enthalpy is C p cap into delta t. So, if we substitute we will get 57 kilo joule per kg r okay, it is specific enthalpy change. We are given the outlet velocity as 125 meters per second, inlet velocity as 75 meters per second. So, we can also find out what is the kinetic energy change per unit mass. If we just substitute we will get 5 kilo joule per kg r. As we have discussed it is not negligible it is not very significant also okay. and for this conditions it is roughly about one tenth of the enthalpy change. What is q dot uh, netrin the rate at which uh, heat is added remember it is heat removal here. So, we have minus sign here and heat is removed at the rate of 28 kilo joule per kg r multiplied by the flow rate of air and we get minus 28 kilowatts. We have to pay attention to the minus sign the way in which we defined is q dot net in is net rate at which energy is added by heat transfer into the control volume. So, in this case because heat is being removed it is minus 28 kilowatts. So, let us substitute all of them in this equation. So, we will multiply the specific enthalpy change 57 with the flow rate of air and similarly the specific internal energy change with the flow rate of air. Of course, q dot net in is straight away in terms of kilowatts. So, the rate of shaft work is 90 kilowatts okay. and of course, that is the rate of work to be supplied to the fluid and that is a power requirement by the compressor. Okay. So, once again this example the kinetic energy changes are not very significant they are not very high, but they are also not negligible. Okay. Okay, the last example based on the transient uh, energy balance. Let us read the example a tank of uh, 0 0.1 meter cube volume this is the tank shown here is connected to a high pressure air line which is shown here both line and tank are initially at a uniform temperature of 20 degree centigrade okay. that is shown here 20 here and 20 here. The initial tank gauge pressure is 100 kilo Pascal okay. the, the absolute line pressure is 20 mega Pascal. The line is large enough so that its temperature and pressure may be assumed constant this line is uh, very large and we are connecting a let us say a small tank and so we neglect the changes in the temperature and pressure in the line. The tank temperature is monitored by a fast response thermocouple, thermocouple uh, is used for measuring uh, temperature and should respond fast at the instant after the valve is open. So, you want to fill this tank you are opening the valve and so the temperature starts to rise inside the tank and that temperature rise is given as 0 0.1 degree centigrade per second. Okay. So, at the instant after the valve is opened the tank temperature rises at the rate of 0 0.1 degree centigrade per second that is why we need a fast response thermocouple. Determine the instantaneous flow rate of air into the tank if heat transfer is neglected we neglect heat transfer. It is a nice question it is difficult to measure the mass flow rate, but easy to measure the temperature rise just put a thermocouple inside and then you can note down the rate of change of temperature. From that using a conservation equation namely integral energy balance equation we are able to find out what is the rate at which mass enters the control volume namely the tank here it says instantaneous and it says initial etcetera because the value keeps changing the temperature keeps changing pressure keeps changing in the tank 
of course, the for the high pressure line we have assumed to be constant because very large, but these values keep changing the temperature, pressure, uh, <coughs> the mass flow rate keeps changing in the tank as it is getting uh, filled up. That is why at, at the moment the valve is open, let us say at some time t equal to 0, we can calculate what is the uh, instantaneous mass flow rate and these values correspond to that initial condition. And this example, a very nice example from Fox and McDonald. Okay, so let's start with the integral energy balance equation. Specifically, this time with the time rate of change term. That's a main attention or main focus of this example. So now all the terms are there in the integral energy balance equation. Now let's write down the assumptions. We will neglect changes in kinetic energy, potential energy, there is no heat transfer as per the question, there is no shaft also. Okay. So, this is the control volume, there is no shaft work, there is no heat transfer as per the question and we neglect changes in kinetic and potential energy. So, let us see how the equation gets simplified. When we say neglecting changes in kinetic energy and potential energy, Two, uh, two implications are there. One is change with respect to time. So, that is why we are neglecting in here also in the transient term also and then changes between inflow and outflow. Okay. Of course, here there is no outflow, but changes between inflow and outflow there again the kinetic energy changes, potential energy changes are negligible. So, we neglect these terms in the convection term also. So, both in the transient term and the convection term, we do not consider the kinetic energy and potential energy terms. Now, of course, right hand side there is no heat transfer term, no shaft work etcetera. So, as I told you the idea of this question is to mainly focus on the transient term. So, left hand side we have d by dt of integral rho u cap dv, the transient term the internal energy is, is what uh, plays a role. Remember in the convection term as we have discussed and emphasized also what plays a role is the enthalpy and this term, uh, this convection term has got simplified into rho h cap v dot and d a. <coughs> okay, so, in this simplified form you can say that the first term tells about rate of change of uh, internal energy in the control volume and second term tells you net rate at which enthalpy leaves the control volume through the control surface in the simplified form. Okay. And want to emphasize once again internal energy in transient term, enthalpy in the convection term. Okay. Okay. Let us uh, make some assumptions. To simplify further, we will assume uniform properties in the tank when I say in the tank inside the tank and also at the inlet, we will also assume idle gas behavior. Okay. Okay. What happens because of that? If you take the first term, the transient term, you can because the properties are uniform, you can take rho u cap outside the integral sign and then you have integral d v which is the volume of the control volume. So, this term gets simplified to d by d t rho u cap which are taken outside the integral sign and integral of d v becomes v and what is rho into v? It is mass of the contents of the control volume. So, the left hand side has got simplified to just d by dt of u cap into m. Okay. Now, let us take the convection term, let us let us see how do we simplify that. The convection term we have rho h cap v dot n d a. Once again as we have assumed, we will assume 
the properties to be uniform across the area. So, I can take out all these terms outside the integral sign and because it is in flow we know that v dot n is minus v where v is the magnitude and what is left out is integral of d a and which becomes a. So, we have rho h cap and then minus v taken outside the integral sign and integral of d a gives us a. Okay. Now, rho v into a is the mass flow rate. So, which is denoted here as m dot we have the negative sign and enthalpy because we have internal energy on the left hand side we will express enthalpy in terms of internal energy as I told you this is an example where we are discussing about the medium is gas. So, we will have to distinguish between enthalpy and internal energy changes. Okay, so, express enthalpy in terms of uh, the internal energy and the PV term and uh, this is the specific volume. So, we express that as 1 by rho. So, we have minus m dot u cap plus uh, p by rho. We will assume air to behave as an ideal gas. So, rho is given by p m by r t where v is molecular weight of air. So, if we substitute for rho as p m by r t, p will cancel and you will be left out with r t by the molecular weight of air. So, this is the expression for the uh, convection term this minus m dot u cap plus r t by molecular weight of air. Okay. So, let us uh, substitute the two simplified uh, terms in the integral energy balance equation for that is also simplified. In the last slide we have seen the simplification for the transient term as uh, d by dt of u cap m. So, let us substitute in this equation the transient term is d by dt of u cap m and then of course, this term we have simplified in this slide. So, let us substitute as minus m dot u cap plus r t by molecular weight of air and remember r is 8314 joule per kg mole Kelvin okay, because rho is in kg per meter cubed. That is the equation we have seen in the last slide this term has been taken to the right hand side. Okay. Let us apply product rule to the left hand side and express as u cap d m by d t plus m d u cap by d t right hand side the same expression. Now, we will have to find an expression for d m by d t. So, what we will do is to use the integral total mass balance equation with the time rate of change term. Okay. That is why uh, the title of this slide says integral mass balance with time rate of change term. Okay. Let us write the integral total mass balance equation. So, that is why it is a good example where we use both the integral mass balance equation and the energy balance equation. Okay. Okay, that is the integral mass balance equation. We will assume uniform properties in the tank and at the tank inlet which means that I can take out rho outside the integral sign integral of d v is v. So, we have d by d t of rho into v and here again I can take all this outside and integral of d a will be a and I have v dot n because it is inlet we have minus v and then of course, rho and rho v is m and rho v a is m dot. So, this equation becomes d m by d t is equal to m dot. How do we interpret? Very simple rate of change of mass in the tank is equal to rate at which mass enters the tank very simple uh, interpretation. Of course, very well known to us, but we have done more formally here. So, let us substitute this relationship between d m by d t tells about rate of change of mass in the tank m dot is the flow rate mass flow rate of air entering the tank. Okay. So, let us substitute this relationship 
in this equation. So, for d m by d t we have uh, m dot and then of course, all other terms are written as such. So, now left hand side we have u cap m dot, right hand side we have once again m dot and u cap they cancel each other. So, above equation gets simplified to m into d u cap by d t is equal to m dot r t by molecular weight of air. Remember even intuitively the final equation cannot have a internal energy term standing alone or enthalpy term standing alone. Why is that? They are all uh, absolute values of internal energy enthalpy do not have a meaning. Always only change of internal energy has a meaning, change of enthalpy has a meaning. So, look at this equation we had u cap, u cap etcetera. Certainly, they cannot uh, they cannot appear in the final equation, they will appear only in terms of rate of change of internal energy or some change of enthalpy etcetera. Okay. Suppose, if your equation final equation somewhere or somewhere enthalpy as such, if at all should be related to some reference. Okay. Also once again I like to mention is rate of change of internal energy not enthalpy because it is in the accumulation term. Okay, so, we have m d u cap by d t equal to m dot r t by molecular weight of air. So, now there are almost uh, few more steps to find out uh, the flow rate of air into the tank. That is the equation which you have written in the last slide. Now, how do we express d u cap? We assume air to behave as an ideal gas and d u cap is C v cap d t. This is what I have been trying to emphasize the change in internal energy is related to change in temperature through specific heat capacity at constant volume. If we for example, wrongly assume that in the uh, transient term also you have enthalpy then we would have wrongly used C p cap here. Suppose, if it were liquid then does not matter because C p and C v are same for uh, liquids or almost same for liquids. Okay, so, let us substitute. So, left hand side becomes m C v cap d t by d t rate of change of temperature okay. right hand side is same okay. and what is unknown here m dot is the unknown. So, let us keep that on the left hand side and bring all other variables to the right hand side. Okay. m has been expressed in terms of rho v because that is what is known to us or we can calculate and uh, we have C v cap d t by d t rate of change of temperature and then this m r is here molecular weight of air then this r t is here. Okay. Just rearrangement and replacing mass of air in the tank in terms of rho into the volume. Okay, now, let us list down all the data given in the problem. The volume of the tank is uh, 0.1 meter cubed. What is rho? Rho is the density of contents of the tank or the density of air in the tank. See that is a transient value that keeps changing. So, we can evaluate only at the instant the value is opened. How do you express this density of air? Once again assuming ideal gas behavior, pressure in the tank, molecular weight of air R and then T. Okay. And we are given the pressure in the tank as 100 kilo Pascal gauge pressure. So, let us convert that to the absolute pressure by adding the atmospheric pressure, converting to SI units and uh, molecular weight of air R 8314 temperature 293. And remember this pressure and this temperature are instantaneous at that instant these are the values and if you find the density it is about 2.4 kg per meter cube that is also instantaneous okay. and C v cap specific heat capacity at constant volume for air is uh, 717 joule per kg Kelvin in this uh, unit it is 717 joule per kg Kelvin and we said we have a fast response thermocouple which measures the rate of change of uh, temperature and that is 0.1 degree centigrade per second which is same as 0.1 Kelvin per second 
and T the temperature instantaneous temperature is 293 Kelvin all these are required to evaluate this. So, if you substitute all these values we will get m dot is equal to 0 0.2 gram per second. Okay. So, very good example we have used both the integral mass balance and the energy balance including the, the transient term. Practically how do you measure the flow rate entering the tank very difficult. Now, indirectly you are measuring the flow rate I would indirectly measuring the flow rate I would say we are measuring rate of change of temperature that is easy to measure using a conservation equation assumptions of course, you are I would say estimating the rate at which uh, estimating the rate of uh, mass inflow into the tank and that is this values at that instant as time progresses that keeps changing. Okay, so, let us summarize the this part of the lecture um, on integral energy balance equation started with the law of physics, the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Then from the law of physics we went to the integral energy balance equation using Reynolds transport theorem. We discussed in detail about the rate of work done which could be by shaft, by pressure, viscous stresses and uh, work done by pressure got added to the internal energy in the convection term. So, we emphasize that the transient term as internal energy, the convection term as enthalpy. We looked at several levels of simplifications of the integral energy balance equation and we arrived at the equation which is usually used in a process calculation course. How do you use that equation? mostly for finding heat to be supplied. Also in a process calculation course you would have done some adiabatic calculations where q is 0 and you would have used the same integral energy balance equation to find out the temperature. Of course, we have not done any such example you would have done certainly several examples. Okay. So, either the heat addition is a unknown or the temperature is unknown, but same integral energy balance equation. We looked at a few applications heater, compressor, filling of a tank mainly our objective was to find out at least under steady state conditions uh, to find out the uh, heat and power requirements. Okay.